So, you know, kicking us off, we have a featherweight bout. We have Odd, or sorry, Ode Osborne, the Jamaican sensation, uh, taking on Jerome Rivera. We were actually supposed to see, uh, you know, Odd Osborne take on Dennis Bondar, who actually we profiled and previewed on our prospect video and we're very high on him. So we're really looking forward to seeing him make his UFC debut, but alas, he withdrew mm-hmm. and uh, Jerome Rivera, you know, stepped in. So Osborne here, you know, he comes in with a uh, eight and three record. He, he did lose his UFC debut to Brian Keller, uh, you know, just last month actually uh, in a guillotine choke in the first round. He was supposed to fight Dennis Bondar in this fight, but again, you know, that didn't happen. So Jerome Rivera is going to step up. Uh, Jerome Rivera, he comes in, he sports a 10 and four record. Uh, you know, he's lost his, his two UFC debuts uh, to Tyson Nam. And most recently, we, again, we saw him last month against uh, the, the little Figueroa brother, mm-hmm. uh, you know, who was very dominant in that victory as well. Uh, you know, so Rivera is going to look to bounce back here and, you know, kind of right the ship on his UFC career. Uh, how, how do you see this fight playing out, man? Yeah, so just a quick touch up there. So the Keller fight was actually last January, like of 2020. So he's actually had some time away from the octagon to kind of get his feet under him. Because the big thing with him is he put on that really great showing on the Dana White Contender Series. Now, what did we mm-hmm. see there? You know, he had a really, really good start to the first round. I think he's he's an improving striker, but his grappling's really sneaky. And at, at the Dana White Contender Series fight was actually a bantamweight. He's going to be fighting a featherweight now. But, you know, Felder kept saying, like, the reach that he had for a bantamweight was absolutely insane. And funny enough, after getting, you know, put to his back, and, and he was getting ridden out a little bit on his back, but he still was able to kind of sneak in an arm when the time came and, and just lock up an arm bar pretty quickly, got the tap. So, you know, it was a really impressive showing, you know, got the contract, all that kind of fun stuff. But... Yeah, you know, he lost by in, in the first round to, to to Brian Kelleher in 2020 January and is about to take on a guy who just fought this January and has actually been fighting very often. You know, like it's it's kind of crazy, but when you think about it, Jerome Rivera as a, as a newcomer took on Tyson Nam in September, then took on Figueroa back in January, and now it's like, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and and take on on a short term like yeah. on a short term fight. I'm gonna jump in and take on Osborne. So for me. When you compare the two fights that he's in, he's going to have a bit of an advantage here, right? Because I think as, as a long striker, he showed that he has what it takes against um, the Figueroa brother, you know? I think Francisco was was very dominant from a control time perspective. I think he was able to get the, the takedowns that he needed. Uh, it was definitely the, the experienced fighter from that regard, an MMA fighter. But again, Rivera really did show that he has the striking to be at this level. And I think the two fights that he's been in are just against really good veterans, guys that can really, really test him to deep waters and and make him like, really force him to use all aspects of his game. In this case, he might have that opportunity, right, to use that striking, to not worry so much about these experienced guys level changing on him, taking him down and kind of controlling him for that long because that fight was very, very close in the grand scheme of things, but it is an MMA fight at the mm-hmm. end of the day. And, 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 and I feel like uh, Figueroa did what he had to do. So in this fight, you know, when you think about it, similar type of thing, right? Like if this fight goes to the ground, you're kind of, you know, in Osborne's corner, like, you know, can you sneak in a, a submission as sneaky as you are with a guy that clearly can have some trouble on the ground? At the same time, mm-hmm. the length of, of both guys and the striking ability of Rivera, what we've seen him, you know, really put up again, a, against bigger names. I, I think this is going to be a really, really interesting fight from that from that perspective. And if it is a striking battle, I mean, especially at the distance, I feel like Rivera's got, you know, a good chance to bounce back here, you know, even on, on short notice. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I couldn't agree more in doing a little bit of analysis on this fight. And, uh, you know, before we dive right into the odds here, I will say, you know, this is a line that doesn't exist here uh, on, on any platform. There is actually no line for this. So we're going to just throw out a guess here. Let's see how close we land. But, uh, you know, no bells will be ringing today. The one point of reference I will give you is that, uh, when it was Dennis uh, Bondar versus Ode Osborne, the line was minus 160 for Bondar. So if that you know helps in your point of reference at all, that was the original line. I have no clue what this line is. <laughs> There's nothing on Odd Shark or anything. Interesting. So let's just see where you, where you think this could line. Uh, you know what? Then I'm just going to have, since Vegas doesn't want to give it a line, I'm going to give it a line. And what I think it should be is, is definitely Jerome Verrera at that minus 150 to minus 170 line. The only reason I think that is the... 
fighting's a little different, right? If this guy's able to take a fight that quickly after fighting, you know, in January, there's a reason behind it. You know, he, he's probably not taking so much mm -hmm. damage. He's probably, you know, coming straight into camp. You know, this is not really a short notice fight. This guy's been fighting at a pretty high level, you know, in, in <laughs> within the last month here. So I, I think that's where, like, when even you take a break for that long and you have that, you know, year loss hanging around and, and you're working towards coming back from that, you know, this is a, this is a tough battle, even on on that short yeah. term, you know, basis. I, I think it's a tough battle, and I, I'm willing to give Rivera a minus one fifty to a minus one seventy line there. I, I think that's a pretty fair line. Like you said, it's not like he's sitting on his couch eating potato chips, right? He, he's been ready to roll. So exactly, you know, stay tuned for that one. Um, you know, once the lines do get released, if we do have a pick for this one, we'll be sure to uh, post it for you guys. That wraps up UFC Vegas 18. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button underneath. We have all of our information, Instagram, Twitter. Give us a follow. That's where all our picks are gonna go up. Uh, closer to Saturday, we'll have a bunch of content going up. So make sure you give us that subscribe, lock that in. Anything else, Siraj? That is all, my friend. Always a pleasure. Glad to get it rolling again. Let's get it. With these lines, we better Always get a pleasure, going. Always a pleasure, dude. Take care. Ah, <laughs> you got it. Peace out.